Hello and welcome to the HR Book Club. In this series, we meet the authors behind the very best HR books. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Steve Brown and we're gonna be discussing his book, HR On Purpose. Hi, Steve, how are you? Good, Leon, how are you? Yeah, very, very good, thank you. Um, so it makes sense to start with introductions. So um, please introduce yourself to our audience. Uh, my name is Steve Brown. I've been in HR for my entire career, so 35 plus years, which is hard to believe. Uh, and I am the head of HR for a local pizzeria company here in Cincinnati, Ohio. Excellent, excellent. So um, let's talk about HR on purpose, because I, I know that there's there's more than one book, um, but this is the book that we uh, decided we'll talk about today. So what's the book about and, and who's it aimed at, Steve? The book's about having people own what they do in HR instead of apologizing for what they do for too long throughout my career, uh, both personally and then what I've seen with my peers. I've seen people say, I'm so sorry I do what I do. I'm so sorry I take care of people. I'm so sorry that I have to do the bad things at the company. And uh, it's really sad. No other profession apologizes for itself, not one. So I wanted to have a message that says what you do adds value, what you do matters. And the audience is really anybody who's in a people-related position. So yes, it's geared more towards HR professionals, but those that lead people can learn from this. It's not specifically so technical. It's more stories and behaviors and ways to just be more people-focused. Okay. So as a motivation because what, well, other people in your in your network were feeling like they 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 weren't necessarily getting i don't know the, the best treatment or feeling like they should apologize to everybody well it's funny when i go to conferences and stuff in the, or or in the field you say hi i'm in hr and it sounds like you're an alcoholics anonymous because people go oh i'm i'm sorry can you tell me your story <laughs> and, and what have you gone through because it must be hell because it's hell for me you go, what is this? I mean, if everything's negative, why would you go in the field at all? Uh, yeah, It's one of those things. Several people have had experiences where they say they've fallen into HR. I, I didn't. I chose HR. And I've learned from it. I've had bumps and bruises throughout the years. But my goodness, there's no better pr profession, in my opinion. I know it sounds uh, kind of trite, and I don't mean that. Uh, but I wake up every day wanting to go see people. So Yeah. Okay, excellent. It's very uh, empowering. I like the uh, I like the message. So, um, the other book you, you mentioned there's a a book that came out during the pandemic, if I'm right. So perhaps you could just give us a little bit of an insight to what that one is. Sure, it's called HR Rising. The first one, HR on Purpose, was more about ownership. HR Rising is about leadership. It's funny, at least here in the states, people feel they can't lead unless they're at a certain level in the company. They have to have a certain title or be a certain senior level person. I don't think that's true. I think you can lead from wherever you are. <coughs> Excuse me, because uh, in the states, at least, there are several HR departments where it's one person. Hmm. So you are the senior person, and you, even if you don't have the title, but I think we have the way to shape behaviors and no other position does. HR is the only role that touches every department because every department has people and, and no one else can say that. So if that's true, how can you help connect? How can you build? How can you encourage? How can you add value? And how can you help the company perform? For years, we've talked about how HR is overhead or HR is an expense. I just don't find that to be the case. If I can get other people to do their job well by taking care of their people, that's invaluable. You can't put dollars and cents to it, uh, but it, it makes the company better. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so in terms of the writing process, the, when you wrote the, the first book, so HR on Purpose, how did you how did you go about that? Oh, it was tough. Uh, I've been able to go uh, around the country here and speak for years. And several people said, hey, I really like your ideas. They're different. They're not what we've heard from people. Why don't you write a book? And I said, sure, that'll be easy. I've been writing a blog for 10 years now. Well, how hard can that be? Well, it's funny. There's a local bar or pub down the street uh, from where I work. And I said, I'm, if I can write one chapter completely new, one chapter, nothing like stealing from my blog. If I can do one chapter 
I'll see if I can write a book. So I sat down and had some lunch and wrote a chapter and wrote, I don't know, 1,500 or 2,000 words. And went, you know, I think I can do this. So then I talked to SHRM, which is the Society for Human Resource Management here in the States. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've been interactive with them for over 20 years. And they said, hey, we'd love to publish a book if you want to put it together. So I wrote it and I wrote the first nine chapters. And I'm like, ah, oh, that was great. What a great experience. And they go, good start. And I went, what? <laughs> I was like, this was, this was hard to do nine chapters. <laughs> so uh, the rule of thumb, and this was uh, interesting to learn. They said, you want it to be at least 30,000 words because then the book will have a spine. And if the book has a spine, people will see it on their shelves. And I went, well, that's fascinating. <laughs> sure. So from 9,000 to 30,000, it took me about a little over a year to write uh, wow. because I, I'm not uh, the person who just sits down and cranks it out and stuff like that. Mm. So uh, it took a year and a half. Uh, it was wonderful. Uh, the best part of it, though, the process was, uh, and the hardest part, when you turn it in and the editor gets a hold of it, the editor starts saying, oh, and you realize how much you don't know when it comes to grammar. And so they started going through it and read, 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 read. But about three chapters in, the editor started asking questions about the book. They were reading it and they were getting into it. And they said, oh, this, this story can't be true. And I mean, oh, it is true. So that's not an edit. That's an engagement. And I'm like, oh, wow, this is wonderful. So the rest of the book, she did a great job, but she asked more questions about the book than correcting my grammar. So it turned out to be yeah. a great process. Uh, after getting it under my skin, uh, I wrote the second book in a, in a month and a half. So. Oh, wow. Okay. So you kind of got in the, in the groove. I, I knew what to do. I, so that was better, but it's, it's, it's a trying process. I would do this. People who want to write a book should understand it is uh, a soul searching process. It's a lengthy process. Uh, you are probably very creative in what you do and what you have to say, but when you give it to others, understand they're going to reframe it for the reader. So there's yeah. parts where I go, why'd they take out that entire paragraph? Well, because they know how their skill set is an editor. I value, I sent a thank you note to the editor for all the hours she put in to make the book sound even better. So it, it was well worth it. Fantastic. So you've done two books. You've obviously did the blogs and very active in the various communities and things internationally as well. So do you have plans to write another book? Is there another one on the on the horizon i do <laughs> okay I, I was just talking to uh, my publisher which sounds so awful i was talking to my publisher yeah uh, but uh, i do i have one more i think and uh and that'll okay. probably be it um i want to write something and i'll tell you you know what's heard this i want to call it okay. hr hr revealed and what I talk, okay. want to talk about is uh, getting out of the mysterious side of HR, because a lot of people come in and they'll start throwing out a bunch of HR terms. And if you're not in our field, they'll go, oh, what does that mean? And we said, we don't know. Oh, it's kind of mystery. Woo. Instead of, instead of saying, uh, we want to be a strategist. I want to move from the mystery side to the strategy side and show people how to do that. Uh, and I think I can do it not from a methodical approach, yeah. but from a practical approach. Interesting. So is that an exclusive for the HR Book Club then? It is. It's the first. Fantastic. Excellent. So um, we always end um, our interviews with a recommendation of a HR book or a book that every HR professional should read. So which one would you recommend, Steve? It's an older book, but it's one of my favorites. Okay. I would recommend The Tipping Point by Malcolm Gladwell. Everything okay. that Gladwell does is brilliant. He's an excellent storyteller. But in the tipping point, he talks about how to tip things socially, how to make a movement happen. And he gives incredible experience experiences in his pages and his stories. I really enjoy it because it talks about net, networking, building businesses where people have failed, things you have very commonplace things, uh, but is something I refer to often. Fantastic. Excellent. Well, thank you very much for your time today, Steve. Thank you, Leon. Great to talk to you.